directors of Firehouse Projects. We are a nonprofit cultural organization in South Florida dedicated to cultivating and presenting the fine arts, performances, and educational programs to our community. Firehouse Projects is delighted to welcome you to our second virtual lecture of snapshots from the Cuban diaspora and Odyssey and Images. This is a series of chats, photographs, and videos honoring the generation of refugees fleeing Cuba throughout the decades of the revolution. Without a political agenda, our goal is to communicate a story as told by the actual people who lived it. Also, this type of odyssey is not exclusive to Cubans. It is a story of countless immigrants that founded this country and will continue to come. The inspiration for this project was Marilyn Morales's. Marilyn, there she is. Hi, Marilyn. Marilyn Morales's musical, Always Remember. Stay tuned for the world premiere date, which is being planned to take place in the spring of 2022, correct? Good. Now I would like to introduce our guest lecturer. She is an adjunct professor of humanities and director and owner of Art Emporium in Little Havana. And the daughter actually of the beloved comedian Leopoldo Fernandez. Please welcome Vivian Perez. Thank so Vivian, tell about your life in Cuba and how your family left. Sure, I'll be glad to. And thank you, thank you to you. Um, Lily and to Kirk and Marilyn for this opportunity. Really, thank you. Well, uh, I left Cuba very young. I, before leaving, I had an opportunity to be educated in a Catholic school, very traditional way of education in Cuba. And um, my house was always full of artists. Everyone loved uh, my father, not only because he was an artist, but also because he was for two consecutive uh, terms the uh, the president of the most important and uh, probably the only uh, artist union in Cuba. So therefore, people used to visit him with even not only the you know the artistic side, but also the the problems of unions, etc. So um, I left very young, as I said before, and during the uh, terrific season, theatrical season that uh, Leopoldo Fernandez had in Cuba for a term of about two years, uh, from 1960 to 1962, uh, he was uh, having a, a, a great um, season. And it involved not only the play, a play that you know he was an actor and he actually had adapted many Spanish um, theatrical plays to, to play at, at that theater, but also it contained a movie and a musical surrounding for example the one that i remember vividly because you know you have to remember that i was about seven years old you have to realize that i was that young but the one that i remember vividly is one that was that was all about the movie the king and i right so uh when he left he left before and then my mother uh, my sister leonor and i left and we went over to spain the three of us while my dad was already in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo with a TV station contract. And so we met, we flew from, we were spent, we spent some time, my mother and my sister and I spent some time in, in Madrid, Spain, and then we met him in Santo Domingo, in the capital of the Dominican Republic, where, he, where we stayed for about six months. And we got together there, my dad, my, um, well, my, dad, my mother, my brother, Leopoldito, who was, uh, he recently passed about, well, about three years ago already. And he was a choreographer, um, an actor, and a dancer. And uh, then we came, all of us came together precisely the next day after President Kennedy was assassinated. We got to Miami that day. I'll never, you know, I remember that. Um, and I didn't understand what was going on, but it, you know, it still, it was very compelling and it still impresses me just to think about it. So um, 
this is how we got here. That's the way that, that we got to, to the United States. Um, I guess that's, that was the question, Lily, right? Yes, yes, it was. Now, you sent us a bunch of family photographs that I really thought was wonderful. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about it as, as we show them um, what we're going to see? Sure, I'll be glad to. First of all, let me tell you that we are like nine brothers and sisters of different marriages. First, there's Lenia Leopucho, which is the guy to the left of the screen that you see there. He was a, a very consummate, a, a very important uh, um, actor, uh, comedian in Puerto Rico. And the guy on the left, on the right, is Tomas Fuste who is a journalist and for the longest time in Miami has had radio and TV uh, news type uh, uh, programs. So then there's Leo Pucho, that's the guy on the picture. And then let's see the other picture. That's uh, Leopoldito. I cannot tell, we cannot tell whether this is Leopoldito, the, the uh, dancer and choreographer and actor or Leonel one of them and that is of course my dad with him just you know hanging out yeah that's a great photograph yes very old it's probably like maybe 60 years old wow. this is lenia lenia my sister lenia at Le, lo, with dad a los violines los oh violines. my goodness yes yes yeah, remember it was a, a great a real restaurant nightclub restaurant yeah that was the um, emblematic place for, for everybody to go and have a good time with uh, uh, music and everything else. That was Lenia. She was Leopucho's um, uh, sister. This is my sister, Leonor, from the same mother, Leonor, when she got married. And that's dad. And this is me when I got married and dad. <laughs> And this is Leopoldito. Very Leopoldito actually, the last thing that he did before he died for many years, he was a, a, an executive producer for El Show de Fernando in Channel 41, I believe it was. Mm. He was there with him working with Fernando. And he was also acting uh, with him, with Fernando in that show, daily show from Monday through Friday. That was the last artistic thing he did. And this is Lionel. Lionel is... Leonora's uh, brother. Okay, Leonora, Lionel, Leopoldito, Leobaldo are all brothers and sisters from the same marriage. Mm. And this is uh, my sister Leonora on the left and myself, grandkids, and then uh, my, um, my not a cousin, but she is my nephew, not nephew. How do you? Um, niece, your my niece. niece. Right, my niece, Poopy, ah. on the right. This is a celebration that we had a great exhibit for dad's work and many, many uh, Miami um, artists contributed and actually donated paintings, original paintings, um, interpreting the character of Tres Patines. And part of that is what I have at home. This is Miguel, Miguel, and a nephew. Ah. That is Leopucho's uh, son, Hector. Ah. <laughs> this is my sister Leonora with her husband, Jose. They live in North Carolina. Oh. Yeah. And this is Leopoldito again with my Sala, my very beloved uh, sister-in-law, who's also uh, an actress, and she was on the radio, doing radio talk shows for the longest time. Ah. A lot of artists in the family. This is my son and my two grandkids. Ah. Yeah. Great my photo. Carlos, my son, Carlos, yeah, and, we, and two grandkids. Carlos is a doctor, and those are the two grandkids. Beautiful family, Nidia. Thank you. Alex? <laughs> and Ellie. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, what was it, I, I wanted to ask you, as part of this project that I'm uh, doing, what was it like for you and your family to assimilate into the American culture? 
Lily, I think that we were very fortunate because he was already a well-known person. And ever since he was here, even when he got here before, remember, I told you we, we met, we got together in Santo Domingo. Even before that, he was actually hired to do a whole uh, program with uh, the owners of, a, of Radio City, a theater that does not exist anymore, of Lee and, and B. Um, Shorts. And that took him off for everything else. Then he worked at the Trail Theater. He opened it up. And then he at the Lepona Theater in Hialeah. For those of you that didn't know, there was a Cuban, actually, theater in Hialeah at that time in the 60s. But even more than that, he actually had the opportunity, because of his name, the people knew him. So he had that opportunity to go to Panama. Uh, after returning from Santo Domingo, it was here, New York, Puerto Rico, then Panama for two years on TV, Mexico for two years on, t in, on TV, and then Peru, you see. So wow. he was actually, um, I mean, we, we had a good life because of his, um, because of his, you know, he, he was well known and everybody loved him. I remember going on a tour with them while I was out of school. When they were traveling, I would stay with my, with my aunt, my sister, my mother's sister. Mm. And uh, then during the summer, I would uh, meet up with them. I would go wherever they were. And I remember going through all of Central America. So if it wasn't a tour, he had a, a gig over in New York or a longer stay in New York uh, in the Hispanic uh, theaters there, uh, or if not in Puerto Rico, and uh, yeah, it was for me and my sister, particularly, it was, it was easy to incorporate our lives into with the American life. Wow. It was kind of uh, the American Hispanic life because it sounds like he was really engaged in uh, the culture of, of a hyphenated American, if you right. will. Yes. Like a Hispanic American here and in New York, like you mentioned, and things like that. Now, yeah. one thing that I remember you mentioning to me that I wasn't aware of, your mother was an actress or acted with him? Yes, my mother really wanted uh, to sing. And instead of that, he wasn't too happy with that. So what he did is he actually created a, uh, a character for her. And she worked at the theater with him in Miami and in Mexico. Those are the two places that, that she worked. I mean, that she acted with, with uh, the Remenda Corte, you know, uh, programs. Yeah. I think that she may have done something in Peru as well, but not as regular as regularly scheduled TV program like the one in Mexico and the theater here in Miami. Um, well, you brought us some videos of La Tremenda Corte and a few little other things. Can we... Can you set this up for us? Show, tell us what we're going to first see. Sure. I believe that the first one is going to be uh, a, before we start with that, let me show you. This is musical. What we're going to be seeing is musical. And so dad had, here's one, old, you know, the, uh, the old uh, discs and this one as well, right? And so there was a lot of music in his life. He sang with Aníbal de Mar, the, the uh, actor that played the, um, uh, the judge. And he was a terrific actor. He also had novels, radio novels and everything that he would act in. Uh, but this one that we're going to see, I believe, is from Ole Cuba. Uh, dad really did, uh, he, he actually worked in five movies uh, that were pretty well taken by the society that he worked in, and then two more that he lived, uh, that he did at a, later, at a later time in life. So this one is Ole Cuba, which is uh, considered one of the, well, to me, it's the best one that he, that he actually performed in, because it's like um, De Varona, Esperanza de Varona told me uh, at least twice, whenever she see me, she would tell me that this movie is really one of the best representation of the Cuban society of the 1950s. And mm -hmm. so 
This one might be the Alfaro, Xiomara Alfaro, or the one at the bus, the one on the bus. I, I think this is Xiomara Alfaro, great Cuban singer uh, in the nightclub. Let's see. No, no, no. Oh, hold on a minute. This is, it starts like this, and then it goes into Aurita Vallover. Oh, yes, Aurita Vallover, which is, it confuses me because of the, of the, of the image that it has. But it's really Aurita Vallover in a Cuban, a typical Cuban of the 1950s bus, where there was the chauffeur, of the driver, as well as someone who would get your ticket and you would pay it, a person, right? So here they are. And what's happening is, What's happening is that there is a Spaniard that goes to Cuba and he likes Cuba so much that he just decides to, when his ship was going back to Spain, he decides to actually go into the bay. He actually dipped into the bay again and started swimming. And yeah. the people who recover him are uh, Pototo and Filomeno. Uh, my dad used to play Pototo. If, and Filomeno was the judge, was an evil demand. And so this is uh, what, what it's about. So then they helped him, they fished him out, fished him out of the water and they helped him. And then they introduced him to the Cuban society. One of which, one of the events that they introduced him to was getting on a bus and they didn't have the fare for the bus. So they sang, they sang to pay the bus fare. <laughs> That's what it is. That's great. Hay calor, parece que va a llover. Vayan trayendo la herramienta para acá. Hay calor, parece que va a llover. Vayan trayendo la herramienta para acá. Cuando la lluvia termine de caer. came from and I grew up hearing it. I, I, I know the lyrics. I don't know how. So um, this one, Pico Pan, is where that one is. That song is. 
and this is another one. They have, I, I think they must have like, I, I'm not exaggerating, like 50 records. They used to play with an orchestra, full-fledged orchestra, Cuban orchestra called Las Melodías de Cuarenta. That's who they always, you know, I recorded. And whenever they went to a nightclub, rarely did they actually work in a nightclub. But when they did, it was, it was uh, with La Melodía de Cuarenta Orchestra. Yeah. And so these are the, the ones that musicians in this particular. But the movie is fantastic. The movie was filmed in 1956, not only in Havana, but in other uh, places, you know, in, 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 out in um, the country. And it represents everything about Cuba, the, uh, the people that uh, were not so, you know, that were poor. I mean, all, of, all the classes, all the classes of society, plus the religion, the African Cuban religion, right? That is, is part of, of, of Cuba, uh, Catholicism, um, a big party, uh, owners of, a, of a, an ingenio or a sugar mill, it, it's really, that's why the Varona, who, you know, was the director of the, um, the Hispanic, the Cuban, the, the Cuban heritage um, collection in Miami, in the University of Miami, always told me that. Good representation of uh, Cuban society. We, we should gather again and see the whole feature film. I would, I would love to sit with you and, and watch it because I, I would have never have seen it. I was, I left when I was seven, I think around the same, uh, in 1961, I left, so. Um, so I would love to do that. Maybe in the next time that we meet in a, in a yeah. space. Come over without, and watch it together. Virus, or with a mask. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> there, there, I think there's more, right? There's, there's other clips that you brought. Yes, there's other clips. Uh, the other one is if you if Kirk you wanna you wanna show them now. Um, sure. We have some photos uh, uh, to okay. her father's okay. lined up. Yeah, they're okay. ready to go. If you wanna talk about those, I can set a, set us up. Okay, great, terrific. Okay, this is this is really something. This is the theater that I was referring to earlier, Radio C Radio Centro, right? Uh, it's like the, the theater that does no longer exist, which is across from, which used to be across from the James L. Knight's theater where there is not a garage, but a parking lot. And so Otto Sirgo is a very well-known Cuban actor. Dinora Ayala was his uh, wife. Jorge Guerrero was very well known as well. Leo Pucho is the oldest son of Leopoldo Fernandez. Neri and Hector were dancers. You see where I'm going? It's, they not only had the play, but they also had music and singers. So mm -hmm. it's the same pattern that he used to have in Cuba at a reduced, you know, a reduced way, not the same extravaganza that they used to have in Cuba, but the same concept. And so he opened the, the you know, he gave the, the other artists that came after him the opportunity to actually uh, perform here. And then that's then later on is when either Lecuona in Hialeah opened first, and then he also had the opportunity to work at uh, the theater, the Trail Theater on 37th and, uh, and 8th Street, which is very popular now with Alexis Valdez. Uh, you know, he has a lot of, he's a Cuban actor, a young Cuban actor of now that has, uh, you know, that has plays and everything. So that is still working. It's still, pre artists are still performing since that time at that theater on 37th and, and 8th Street, the Trail Theater. I love so the price. Look at the, at the, uh, at the uh, ticket, the how much it costs, 99 cents. Yes. <laughs> right. And shows, yeah, that's a gem to have. And this is from that movie. Uh, the guy on the left is the Spaniard, then there is Dan, and then there is uh, um, Aníbal de Mar, de Mar, and then there is El Chino Wong. That is his character. That's the name of his character on the right. 
to, and the, the, you know, the thing about the movie is that it's so inclusive about the society, the human society. In Havana, there used to be a tremendously big and popular Chinatown. So I so think, I think it's probably one of the largest, earliest largest, and maybe there's somebody out there who knows the better history than me, mm -hmm. but I believe it, it is the largest in the, this hemisphere of yeah. Chinese. So there you go. It, it was mainly in this in the street Santa. So that's what they called it like that too. And talking about diversity, yes, that was at one point something that may not be so politically correct anymore, but he used to, he, he did it not all the time, but he actually worked as a, um, uh, as a, 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 a person of color and he used to put the, the makeup on like some other artists. The black face that is now so, so controversial, but so many actors, not only him in Cuba, but throughout the United States and, and everywhere. Exactly. That was, that was part of the, the norm, so to speak. Exactly. And he did that. That's a terrific photo right there of him. And this is my mother on Mexican TV with him right in one of the um one of the sketches that they were doing on one of the programs that they were working at in monterrey and they filmed this in monterrey mexico not in mexico city that's where it was even though it was shown in mexico city they was it was filmed in monterrey that is where they lived in the north of mexico and so the next one is them both Plus, my brother, Leopoldito, you can see him there do, doing TV. He went to Mexico and acted, you know, man, in, in many instances with them. Um, and the other two on the right are Mexican actors. But that's the three of them on TV, in Mexican TV. There are many, many uh, programs, many programs that are on YouTube from, especially from the Mexico uh, contract that they had on that, uh, on that TV station. They're out there on YouTube. And we also have, uh, uh, you said you'd like to um, uh, see another video clip then? If you want to, we can, yeah. Can you introduce it? I'm sorry? Introduce the second video. Okay, the second video is, I forgot which one it was, uh, Kirk. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, from La Tremenda Corte. Okay, yes. What this is, is the opening um, words and, and music and everything that opened the program. That is the opening of the program. And I know that people, when they hear it, either they, if, if they ever saw it on YouTube or they ever saw it uh, on TV or in the radio, this is the way that it sounded. Here we go. It's the hour to hear and to hear. Las estrellas de la tremenda corte. Don Leopoldo Fernández de Catines. Aníbal de Mar, el tremendo juez. Norma Zúñiga, Luz María Lananina. El ejecutivo Jesús Alvarino. Dirección Sergio Peña. That's what I wanted to do. And that's the courthouse right there. Yeah, it, 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 it's the same routine. That's the way that it, you know, people got used to. Then they start talking about the case. And then Tres Patines was also always, and <laughs> always the, the one that got things uh, messed up. And he was the, the criminal. And then everybody would accuse him. That's the whole premise of the, La Tremenda Corte. 
he will be the accused all the time. The next one, I believe, is, are we going to go with the next video? Sure, that, the uh, title I have is Funny Mathematics. Okay, so here is in the middle, they were just discussing the case, and then uh, they started talking about mathematics. Uh, Tres Patines challenges the, uh, the judge, and you'll see what happens. You, know, you don't need to speak Spanish to, to realize what's going on. Uh, very uh, funky mathematics here. Si entre siete y tocamos a trece cada uno. Veintiocho pesos entre trece. Entre siete a trece. Ah, entre siete a trece. A trece. Óigame, si Pitágoras no miente, veintiocho sí. entre siete. Sí. Había cuatro. A cuatro. A cuatro. No, 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 Tráigame una pizarra oh. ahí enseguida. A usted va a demostrar delante de todos estos señores sí. si es así o no es así. Ah, sí. Usted no dice que, 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 que es eh, 28 entre 7 a 13. A 13. Demuéstrame. Ah, yo es rápido. Demuéstrame. Ah, yo es rápido. Bueno, rápido. Demuéstralo. 28. Sí. Entre 7. A 1. 1 por 7, 7. De 8 a 7, 1. 21 entre 7 a 3, 3 por 7, 21. Uno pago a dos pagos, se acabó. No sé, Dios. Ahí está el dinero. No sé, Dios. Dale el favor, súbeme 13, 7 veces. 13, 7 veces. Sí, señor. ¿Para qué? Si sale así como usted dice, sí. usted me entiende, yo lo absuelvo a usted. Súbeme 13 veces. Ve contando. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro, cinco, seis, y siete. Sube ahí a ver ahora. Sube. Sí, vive la parte. Sí, lo estoy viviendo. No hay necesidad. No, de... si hay necesidad. Sube. Tres, seis, nueve, doce, quince, dieciocho, veintiuno. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 y 28. Ahí está el dinero. Ahí está el dinero. There you go. Special mathematics. <laughs> okay. So we have a fourth video. One more. Right? If you've started up, I can tell them. Okay. Coming up. Okay, so this one is from a movie that was filmed in 1951, believe it or not. It's called uh, Hotel de Muchachas, Young Girls Hotel. And uh, this is just a section of it where Aníbal de Mar is playing Chang Li Po, who's supposed to be like a Chinese detective, but he's also involved with the hotel, okay? I believe the sound on this one is a little bit low, so we'll have to lean in to hear it. Okay. Los hombres son muy confiados, señora. El señor detective lo arreglará todo. 
seguro. Tenga la seguridad. Hay que tener paciencia, mucha paciencia. El asunto de Padre, hermano, todos son malos, pero yo sospecho de todo, hasta de mí mismo. Muchísimas gracias, señor de Este asunto queda encomendado a su perito. Me gusta. Vamos a... So there you got a glimpse of how young both of them were. Yes. Very yes. young. How old were they when they, when, or, or I your... think they must have been in their 40s, actually. Late, maybe late 40s, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, I'd like to hear now about you okay. and your accomplishments. And I've been to many, many Art Emporium, wonderful things that you've done with Art Emporium and the success is there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about those things that you, you personally have done? Art Emporium, I had an idea and I discussed Art Emporium with an um, artist friend of mine because of my teaching with at Miami Dade College, uh, you know, humanities, I teach humanities there. And so, the, the, you know, that, the idea came out of that. I've been teaching at Miami Dade College since 2004. And so Art Emporium was born first in July 25th, on July 25th, <clears throat> 2014, as a group, as an artistic group. And we had a terrific, um, demo of what was to come at the Key Biscayne um, Community Center. We had young kids, we had music, we had just musicians, musicians and, 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 uh, and singers. We had a play that I wrote where I, I actually, it, I had a lot of fun doing so. And young folks came over, young uh, uh, you know, women and young ladies and, and young men interpreted it. It was a, a group, and I cannot remember, unfortunately, the name of the group right now, but it's in Kendall in, at that time. I don't know if they're still together. A terrific youth group that they had at that time. So it was a very, um, a, a, a very packed program. And it also had a lot of visuals. It had sculpture, and it has 42 pieces. So it was, you know, we actually went on out with a big bang of all of this that, that, that happened at the same time. So some people told me, are you sure you wanna do this as in you know, the cultural center that, that you, why don't you concentrate on one of the fine arts only? And I said, no, I want a cultural center. I don't want only one, one art form. I want all the fine arts represented. And that is what actually Art, art Emporium did from the, uh, from the 7th of November, 2014, until it closed over five years later on the 19th of December, 2019. And of course, then we have what we are still going through, uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, you know, uh, pandemic. Uh, so at the moment, uh, Art Emporium, where I'm at, uh, my property has structural damages. It's a lot of problems. So even if I wanted to, I, could, I couldn't open. Um, the insurance hasn't come through. I'm still waiting for, for, for it to be fixed. And, um, and then, you know, the plans are to actually reopen uh, either, either here or preferably somewhere else uh, to, to conduct or to actually have and celebrate the fine arts the same way that I was able to do for those fine five years. The accomplishments are that it really was a full-fledged cultural center with visual art exhibits, at least one. This is the, yeah, this is the entrance of our, our Art Emporium. Thank you, Kirk. That's the way the house looked at that time. Now it's a little bit less flowers, but a, you know, it's a garden, it's a house in Little Havana on 13th Avenue and 7th Street. And I am proud to say that uh, 13th Avenue is also Cuban Memorial Way. So the house sits there. And so that, uh, that is the, the actual museito, the little museum that I have, Leopoldo Fernandez, with theatrical uh, props, things that he used, and even, even his, uh, his own clothing that I have in back of me. 
and a collection of hats, many photographs of Cuban stars, and most importantly, I have, uh, you know, I, we were so fortunate to have so many Cuban uh, artists donate their interpretation of the character of uh, um, Tres Patines. Here we have Fernando Fernandez, uh, Emilio Hector Rodriguez, uh, Adriano Nicot, uh, Suarez in the background over there. And those are some little awards that uh, actually uh, Art Emporium has been able to, you know, it was awarded through the years, through the five years. There's more and certificates. And so that is what the little museum looks like inside. Okay. Some of the pictures. Hmm. But the rest of the property, the rest of the house was used to have everything that I'm going to tell you, the accomplishments on the fine arts. Visual exhibits during those five years, at least 50, uh, approximately 10 per year because they used to be changed on a monthly basis. But sometimes it would take, you know, it took some time to uh, uh, take everything down and then the other, for the other uh, exhibit to actually be installed. We had li literature tertulias, groups of literature that would meet often, at least once a month. And we had five groups like that at one point. Uh, we had 30, over 30 regular meetings on a year, uh, on a yearly basis, just of the literary groups. Then we had within those literary groups and outside of the literary groups, we had over 80 book presentations. Over 80 book presentations. I believe it was 82. It ended, it ended uh, up being uh, 82. Theater, we had theater. We had over 25 presentations of theater. And uh, I want to mention Chicho Porras, Alejandro Valindo, Valle Hidalgo. Valle Hidalgo is a, a terrific artist, uh, actress, director, and writer from Spain who actually interpreted Dulcinea for us, a monologue that she did. And that's just one, one of the many things. The space was also used for other cultural group meetings. Uh, for example, there was a, a, a group, another cultural group that actually formed itself over here. They established themselves. They had their first gathering over here and then subsequent more gatherings. Um, let me see. Um, there was a, a major group that uh, actually came and had annual meetings here from Guantanamo. Uh, let's see, for Angel Calle Callejas is the person that actually uh, contracted us to have uh, them meet here. Armando Añel, a, a well-known um, Cuban um, uh, intellectual person, and just like Angel Gallejas is as well. We also opened the place for rehearsals, rehearsals of other plays that were, that were performed in other places. But these rehearsals uh, were, and many of them took place, many rehearsals took place here. So even when we didn't have, the point is that even when we didn't have some kind of performance uh, or some kind of um, a party or a book presentation or music, over 50 musical presentation, over uh, 50 musical presentation. Um, we had everything from classical music to a rock man, everything, you name it, we had it. Albert Vargas is a, a, an instrument, a person that is instrumental in, uh, in forming uh, an, an art emporium. He helped us tremendously with everything that needed to be done. He is a performer, a great imitator. Of, um, he is like, I call him the multi-artist. He's a multi-artist. He actually can imitate uh, famous people in the Hispanic world like Rafael, or he has his own beautiful music and his own beautiful, beautiful voice as well. And so someone that does Cuban music, very typical Cuban music with all, all the different uh, sounds that you have, different uh, genres of music, of, of Cuban music, uh, and doing ballads is Vitico Valdez, 
who has been here many times as well. So if I can begin, if I begin to tell you all the musicians that are here, Jorge Triana, um, I mean, there's so many of them, uh, and I don't want to leave them all out, but uh, it's hard to, to mention all of them. So every fine art was represented, like, uh, like I told you. In the visual arts, not only did we have painting, but we also had sculpture. We had um, graphic, uh, you know, digital graphic designs on TVs. Uh, we had all sorts of um, uh, special effects to support the presentations, the, the exhibits. And so people came here with lightning and all of that. It, it was a big production. And Lily, you know, because you were here uh, yes. several times. And I, I, didn't I do a photo show for you? Exactly, you oh. did. Exactly, yes. you did, you did. Yeah. That's another one, photography. And you actually took part of it, yes. Our friend uh, Jorge, right? Yep, exactly. Yes, that's true, Jorge Fernandez. Yes, exactly. So as far as you asked me about me, about what my, myself as well, right? Yes. Okay, so I right. started, I started a, a computer programmer at Eastern Airlines, if you can remember that, that back, that, you know, long ago about at Eastern Airlines. And so I, one day I was programming, the most boring thing there is, is just be in front of a computer programming, take it from me. So I have that background, but I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I went back to Barry, finished my degrees in, uh, my degree in humanities. I also have a degree in business. And so then I went out and I, I incorporated myself into the academic world around the year 2000. And there I am still uh, as a professor, and, but I've been an administrator at St. Thomas University and at my alma mater, uh, Barry University as well. And I teach humanities, art history, art appreciation, and some philosophy courses as well. So from there is that I took off, you know, to, to have this cultural center to represent all the fine arts. Yeah. And that's what our, our Art Emporium is all about. Yeah. I, I understand that you are seeking assistance in the form of corporate or private support uh, for the establishment of a possible museum dedicated to your father. Correct? Exactly. Because uh, in order to, sometimes what I would do uh, is take like 10 or 15 days uh, at least twice a year and really uh, fill this place up with all of the things that I have, not only what you saw in that dedicated space, like the one that I call the Little Museum. And so I have so much to, you know, to share about his legacy. And it is important to note that everyone from Latin America know him very well. A lot of people know him because, again, uh, he was a radio and TV personality, and many of us grew up with that. Not only, you know, not only in Cuba, but in Nicaragua, for example, in Medellin, Colombia, even in Spain, in Santo Domingo, um, in Salvador, Peru. They Peru, they you know, they're fascinated with him in Peru, and so and, and in Mexico. So. And Mexico, as you know, is the big venue, right? So, yeah, so I think that uh, it is in order that he would have a place, but in order, yes, to celebrate his legacy, but also to do uh, what was done already in, uh, in uh, what was accomplished already, to continue that labor of love, if you will, and to give the young folks an opportunity. You know, like for example, one of the things that I would really would like to have is to have music new music incorporated, classes, music, you know, like a conservatorium kind of thing right. um, into that type of center. So I am actively looking for anyone that is interested in helping out to let us know, right? Um, through, uh, I mean, you can contact me at uh, Vivian Perez 88 at hotmail.com or get in touch with Kirk or Lily Fontana. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm available. You can, actually you can, I have a, a Facebook web um, account and you can actually email me through, contact me through the messenger as well. So. And Vivian, it's, it's, I mean, 
the guy de la mata that i will i've said this before that you have the assistance help of firehouse project thank you i appreciate it we've been friends for a long time and this is how i met you when yeah. i walked in somebody told me go here because you're gonna love it and i did and there's christina masdueño doing yeah. it the best flamenco demonstration that at, I've ever seen. At Firehouse, yes. At Firehouse, your place. Yes. Similar to what I have been doing. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Christina ended up working uh, with me with my classes, with my humanities classes, giving the same flamenco demonstration. I've never, not even in Spain, I've seen anything like what she does. Yeah. She's terrific. She's a um, wonderful teacher. Yes, she is a wonderful teacher and she goes into his, the historical aspect Right. From the Punjab people and, you know, and the, and the people, the Romani from Romania that actually are part of the culture. She does a terrific job. And that's how I met you. Yeah. And she, she came out of Kirk and, and Maryland and the Young Conservatory. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yes. Along those lines, I've um, uh, posted in the chat some important uh, links. And actually, let's check that uh, Vivian Perez 88 at hotmail.com. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay, and firehouseprojects.org. Always remember musical.com. You'll see in back of me the um, uh, new musical about the Cuban-American experience that's set to premiere. Um, Lily, Lily will say something about that at our closing. We also have uh, uh, Firehouse Projects and the Unconservatory online. Um, but I also know I should say we, we have uh, several people who are waiting to add some comments if you'd like to take some questions. Yes, please. open the mics. I'm going to, right now, so for everybody listening, I'm going to unmute everyone, so don't all talk at once, but uh, I have a raise couple of people. Hand, like I say to my class, raise your hand so I know you have a question. Right. I'm, I'm unmuting everyone, and right now I'd like to call on, um, let's see, he's in there. Uh, Jorge Rodriguez uh, had Ooh. something special to say. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And we have to unmute if you're if you're muted, you have to unmute. You. I've I've unmuted everybody. I'm trying to, anyways. Unmute all. But you may have to do something. You're on. Yeah. So you're unmuted, Jorge. Yeah. How you doing, uh, Vivian? Hi, Jorge. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi, sure. Uh, I remember. Uh, I was like. Uh, I, uh, uh, Kirk was mentioning to me about uh, what you're doing with you know your, about your dad. Um, I was like 19 years old. I don't know if you remember, uh, if you were back here back in those days, uh, La Fabulosa, WFAB. Yes, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I used to play, I was like 15 years old back then, and then uh, when I was like 19, uh, in Ventel, I was doing the Fabulosa. Mm -hmm. I, I, I brought that up because there was a place called nearby, about three blocks away, called Brisas de Varadero, uh -huh. where there was, we did the, uh, I'm a musician. I'm a trumpet player, and I was in the when the the house band there. Okay. And there was a show there that we, that we did La Tremenda Corte. Really? It was yeah. my dad in it. it I believe so. Yeah, a couple of times. I, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't many, and I participated a little bit here and there, you know, little bits and and stuff. That is. And, cool. uh, it just broke uh, broke back those memories, you know, nice memories. I'm glad, I'm glad it did. Nice those were, you know, the, the very beginning of the, of the Cuban experience in Miami, especially, right? In the 60s, yeah. 70s. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, goes back a long way, you know? And I wanted to add a, a little note here about uh, Jorge. Uh, he's going to be playing the part of Pepe Timba, a very famous uh, Cuban iconic character. Wow. Uh, Maryland's musical, Always Remember, and he's um, next to his nephew, Chris, who's going to play the part of Carlos in the musical as well. And um, uh, I, I know Marilyn is there too. Uh, Mari, would you like to say anything uh, 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 to Vivian or, or I'll Always Remember? Well, I mean, it's ideal and I, my mom was kind of restless. And uh, I said, uh, I got just a thing, mom. So I put La Tremenda Corte. And uh, <laughs> I found it on YouTube and that really, I mean, she got uh, some laughs and she was more at ease, you know, but uh, I, I love it. I, there's, I, st I, I think they still put it on the radio, by the way. Oh yes, they do. And not yeah. only in Miami, but in Miami, they put it actually twice a day, one in Radio Martin 
and the other one in uh, in uh, which is the one oh, the La Poderosa, I believe it is. They have it at one o'clock or, or no Univision Radio is where they have it at one mm-hmm. o'clock, and then the other one at four o'clock, I believe. But also in Latin America, can you imagine? This is the value that this uh, program has because every every region. Uh, every Hispanic has its own uh, culture. Every Hispanic cu- culture has its own idiosyncrasies, yeah. right? And so these people understand the Cuban language and they laugh with it. It's amazing, you know? That's one of the values that this uh, program has that is so dear to to the society, you know? And there you go, your mother <laughs> just, uh, you know, she liked it so much that she settled down and everything, that's good. <laughs> And Vivian, uh, you mentioned too about uh, younger audiences. I'm going to call somebody out. Um, our niece, Amanda Gray, is watching. I'm going to ask her to and, her husband. and say say hello there. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I enjoyed your presentation. It's very informative. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, we have to keep uh, the tradition, you know, the Cuban tradition with young folks such as you. So yes. Yeah. We have younger than you, Amanda. I have, I have Jose Santana, Victoria Cruz, Dax Fontana. They're all watching. This is totally <laughs> new to them. Totally. I don't know if they've heard it through their parents or grandparents, but uh, this is el cubanismo that they they with the hyphenation and uh, they were all born here have missed. So this is why the, why I did do this, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the diaspora, because it's so vital and important to, to keep a certain, certain roots mm-hmm. from every, any and every immigrant. I, um, I, wish that they could translate, I wish that they could translate some of the, the Tremenda Corte, you know, the, the before. Because also, there is. We should do a grant to fund mm-hmm. subtitles in La Tremenda Corte and things like that for this yeah. generation that's not familiar. That's yeah. a, uh, I know Jose Santana is up in Texas in SMU <laughs> with a giant Cuban flag in his dorm. So <laughs> they feel it in their hearts, but they need more information. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's true. To give up to the tradition is so important. It really is. Yes, indeed, indeed. You, you know. I've given everybody the option to unmute themselves. Would anybody else like to ask a question of Vivian or have any other comments? It was a great experience. I had a great time listening in. I learned a lot. Thank you. That's Jose Santana. He's in Thank Texas. You. How are you, Lily? <laughs> By the way, uh, Vivian, I don't know if you know, on YouTube, if you want to see uh, old movies from your dad from Cuba, you can always, uh, I, I, I've, I've found a few and I used to play them for my parents, you know. Great. Uh, they're, they're great movies, they're funny. He's not, like the main star in the movies. Great, I know, yes. Yeah, it's there's Hotel de Muchachas. There you go, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there is the one filmed in, in Puerto Rico in 1965 called Virgenes de la Nueva Ola. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and he did seven. Well, seven. That's just some info, so maybe some people didn't know. If you want to see a movie from uh, Tres Patines, Leopoldo, uh, yeah. you can YouTube it. And and some uh, also some of the shows exactly. of the, the Corte and stuff like that. From Mexico and from Peru, because remember, yeah. he went to several countries, and yeah. Mexico and Peru actually already had the videotapes you know, to be able to do it, you know, to do the, to do the recording on videos. And that was done, and that's why they're, they're there, available now. You know, it's living legacy, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what's so good about the visuals, you know? That's why this project is so important. It is very important. Uh, time and look at who we were mm-hmm. at, as, as a country, as a people. Right. And what has happened? USA? Que pasa USA? That's oh. a terrific job, show. So if we look at that. This that you're doing. This your idea was fantastic because you're continuing on on the same tradition as Que pasa USA, but this is more important because you're you're actually taking the people that were there, 
Yeah. Like in, in my case and my family's case, you know? Right. right. We all have a history and we all have a story to tell. And this is a spin-off of Always Remember from Marilyn's inspiration. Yeah, actually, I was inspired by, by him because uh, there's a Fulano Mengano in my musical. And it's kind of like, you know, the Fatines and, you know, so I kind of did a speak. Cuban character, the Cuban character yeah. type of person. Yeah. I'm dying to see your musical. I'm dying to see it. <laughs> you both are so good musicians. Perfect. I mean, great musician. Un, un mensaje en español desde ese gringo. Uh, si hay alguien que quiere uh, preguntar algo en español, es posible, antes de conociendo a mi esposa, yo no sabía ni una palabra de español. <laughs> Anyone? Alguien quiere decir algo en español? Oh, well, I have people in Spain that... Mayra, Mayra, Mayra is my friend, Waldo Gonzalez and her, and her, uh, and his uh, wife, Mayra. Mayra is a great editor and Waldo Gonzalez Lopez is a, is a, is a writer, is a poet, is a, um, a, a journalist from Cuba and they're dear to my heart, Waldo and Mayra. Mayra, ¿tú querías decir algo? Bueno, ¿me oyes? Sí. sí. Ah, no, nada que... Hemos estado mirando Waldo y yo todo, pero bueno, en fin, lo que hemos podido entender, eh, mi Waldo, tú sabes que está recién operado, se fue ahora, y estábamos mirándolo todo, hablando, eh, recordando las tertulias que no sé si las mencionaste, porque como no entendemos, sí. las, las tertulias que se hacen ahí, sí. las la, la que se hacían, Exacto. bueno. La de, la de la, Waldo. La de Waldo, añorado encuentro. Que uh -huh. eh, iban muy, muchos poetas, muchos músicos, muchos distintos, distintos géneros. Uh -huh. Y bueno, la pasábamos muy bien ahí, en, en tu casa. Gracias, Mayra. Y, y tú sabes que siempre hemos sido tremendo fan de tu papá. ¿Cómo no? Y yo le decía a Waldo que, que tú tienes la suerte de, de poder ver, aunque sea en imagen, a tu papá. Que eso no lo tenemos todas las personas. Es verdad. Y eso es grande. Sí. Todos sí. nosotros, los hijos, tenemos esa, esa fortuna. Exactamente, sí. Exacto, exacto. Gracias, Mayra. Lo sí. quiero mucho. Waldo es una persona y tú también... Tremenda editora de, de, de todo. Y, y Waldo, bueno, ya yo lo introduje como periodista, eh, escritor, poeta. Waldo y tú hacen un team de intelectuales. Los dos lo son. Tremendos intelectuales. Y amigos tuyos. Exactamente. Muy amigos míos. Muy amigos míos. Sí. Aquí está Olver Vargas. Olver, ven acá un minutico para que veas a Mayra. Uy, digas algo. Está ahí en la casa. Sí. Olver es. Uy, oh, es. mi amigo lindo. Mira, Mira Olver aquí. <risa> Olver es tremendo imitador. Hola. He's Oye. Actor, he's, a, he's an imitator. He's a singer. <risa> ¿Cómo andas? De lo más bien. Todo bien. Todo bien. Todo bien. bien? ¿Cuánto estuvo hasta ahora aquí? Sí. Pero. Eh, Tú sabes. Qué bueno. Y bueno, se fue para, para la cama. Ya, tú sabes. Yo aquí estaba escuchando la, la entrevista y viendo sí. a Vivian ahora todo el tiempo. Una entrevista muy bonita, donde se habla de lo que ha sido el Exporium, que ha sido de verdad uno de los lugares que más oportunidades ha dado. Exacto. En general, no solo de las artes plásticas, sino también de la no, música. No, 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 no. De la actuación, eh, de las artes escénicas. Exacto, también. Y, hasta ensayos, Mayra, como tú sabes. Bueno, hasta una película sí. se hizo aquí. Eh, eh, Emporio ha sido un centro cultural muy importante en la vida, eh, y valga la redundancia, cultural de Miami. Gracias, sí, señor, sí, es verdad. Pero siéntete por aquí, porque un hombre no puede estar sentado cuando hay una dama de bueno, pie. Esto... Eso me lo enseñó mi papá, que era guajiro, que era del campo. Cuando un hombre está sentado, la mujer también tiene que estar sentada. 
Porque, ¿qué va? Eso no puede ser. El actor, el actor is oye, coming out. Oye, mira, eso no es fácil. Tú sabes cómo es eso. Hay que ser guajiro de verdad para saber lo que es. Atender bien a las mujeres y entender a las mujeres. ¿Qué aguanto aquí? Oye, me mencionó. He mentioned that we, there was a film that was filmed in this, uh, at, at the Art Emporium. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama la muchacha? La, 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 la directora, Dios mío. ¿cómo se llama? Eh, Karina Silva. Karina Silva, mi gran sí. amiga peruana, que hizo una película que se filmó por entero en la pequeña Habana y... Art Emporium era el, el lugar de, 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 la, era la base. de la protagonista, el protagonista vivía dentro de la casa. Bueno, o sea, sí, ahora me quité el sombrero, eh, cogí el sombrero de papá para que tú sepas cosas más grandes, chico. Imitando a papá. Tú no sabes, la... óyeme, ¿tú estabas allí? Sí. Yo, yo también estaba, chico. Ah. Un sketch, un sketch. No, Ay, él, es, él es tremendo actor, tremendo músico, Kirk. Ah, el músico cantante, él es cantante, sí. imitador, imita uh, muy bien a, 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 a muchos hispanos, a muchos uh, cantantes hispanos. Bueno, si quieres te traigo aquí a Rafael de España. Toco madera, no quiero tu cariño que me muera, porque quererte. Muchísimas gracias, muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Bravo. <risa> pues sí. Gracias. Okay. Okay. Orber ha estado conmigo aquí desde el día, desde un año. Tú viniste como a los seis meses, a los seis meses, hasta ahora. Siempre está aquí conmigo sí. y uh, con su apoyo. Bueno, está diciendo Waldo que quien lo llevó para allá fue él. Es verdad que sí. Sí, claro. Es verdad que sí. Además, Waldo fue el primero que escribió de mí cuando yo era un chamaquito. No, ya, ya. Él me vio y él no le gusta que yo hable eso, pero yo tengo gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios, como digo yo, tengo una memoria buena hasta ahora. Y me recuerdo que él escribió en la bohemia. Pero hay más aún, noche de agradables sorpresas. Llega un joven, pero auténtico imitador, Olver Vargas, que debe ser tomado en cuenta por el Instituto Cubano de Radio y Televisión. Y ya es la sana carcajada ante sus versiones de actores y cantantes. Eso fue lo que escribió Adela. Tienes sí, una memoria fabulosa. Sí, Gracias. Dime. So, do you want to wrap up with any other comments? Eh, no, mira, este es Olver, Olver hizo el, el, yes. el, el personaje en la calle, en la calle 8 sí. eh, por muchos, como tres años estuviste como en eso, años, sí. hasta que vino COVID-19. Eh, esto es lo que yo quiero hacer ahora, agradecer a personas que han sido, eh, como se dice en inglés, instrumental. These are uh, people that have been instrumental in getting this thing going, and Olver is at the top of the list. Waldo Gonzalez López y su esposa Mayra, que ya vimos de ellos. Gustavo García. Esta obra la hizo Gustavo García. Name? Gustavo García did this, uh, representing my father in a, in a, um, in a, what be, has become the icon. Qué buena, uh, the iconic qué buena caricatura. Painting, the iconic painting of, uh, of this place, Gustavo García. And he's always supported me. Someone that is not here with me and I don't have a sí. image for is Eduardo Rodriguez, uh, a person that was um, that that is actually a hairdresser, and also uh, a person who has been unconditionally uh, always supporting me here. He was also he was also an actor. He's older now, uh, but he was an actor. Victigo Valdez, who has had sí. numerous presentations of music at this place. Uh, with, uh, you know, with his uh, great music. He's a musician, he's uh, a composer, and he's also a, a singer, Vitico Valdez, uh, with, you know, he sings all kinds of genres of music, and probably Jorge, you know him, right? Yes. Probably. Yeah. We've worked together. Yeah. I also recorded uh, for him uh, a couple of songs. I, uh, oh, okay. And that new, in the, in the song that he's doing, the... Um, the record. This is back in the, the 90s. Oh, I see. Yeah. All righty. Great. I'm glad you know him. Yeah. Mayi Salas, who's my, uh, my sister-in-law. Henry Saragossi, who I met probably like a year and a half ago, but he, Henry has also been giving us a lot of support. Giovanni Bauta was the first um, visual artist that exhibited at, at Art Emporium. The first ever exhibition was his. Mariano Tamarino, my unconditional Ecuadorian friend, who's a terrific artist. 
Chicho Borras, a mine of, of letters, uh, Glenda, uh, Glenda, she actually works, uh, her, she's, she's been involved in music and they do a lot of productions, uh, keeping up with the uh, Cuban, uh, Cuban tradition. Loli Triana, who also is one of the persons that had a, uh, a literary group here. Manuel Paneque, musician, Jorge Triana, musician. Uh, Gustavo, Luis Gustavo Rojas, Claudia, um, Claudia, uh, what is Claudia's last name? ¿Cuál es la, cuál es la apellido de Claudia? Grosso, Claudia, Claudia Grosso. Grosso. Con Claudia de Cuba también. Right, and I, I want to stop because the list goes on and on and on. I want to thank the people because they were all have been instrumental. There's many others, but these that I mentioned have been uh, very, uh, you know, close, near to my heart. And also, I, I'm leaving someone that is, is, is the same case, Joan Vega, who is uh, an actor and writer. So, uh, yes, those are the one the people that I, you know, wanted to uh, to single out because they gave, gave me a lot of support, unconditional support. Really thank them. <laughs> All righty, so that's my wrap-up. Uh, Lily, you were saying. But before leave, be I'm sure. Sorry. Hey, Lily, before everyone leaves, I wanted everybody to take a look at the chat um, and notice that we uh, uh, pasted all of the links in Vivian's email, Firehouse Project, Always Remember Musical, um, and uh, to go see us on Facebook. Uh, if you want to grab those links, copy and paste, Para todo que está mirando esto, tenemos enlaces en el uh, chat. Uh, si puede copiarlo y uh, sacarlo para por el futuro, uh, está disponible en el chat. Okay? Okay. I want to thank all of you who have joined us today. Thank you, Vivian Perez, for being with us and for all your contributions to the community and to Firehouse Projects in the past. Um, Please tune in again on Sunday, November 1st at 4 o'clock for another web webisode of Snapchats from the Cuban Diaspora and Odyssey and Images. Um, our featured guest will be, she's here somewhere, maybe she's not anymore, Alina Diaz, she's the owner of Casa Artali. On behalf of Firehouse Projects and the Unconservatory, this is Lilia Montana wishing you all a fabulous rest of your week.